Good morning. Good to see y'all this morning. Welcome to worship. Glad to have, have those of you joining us online as well. Uh, you'll notice Pastor Josh is not here this morning. The folks are serving. I uh, asked him to, to be their preacher today. He is down there for their mission Sunday. So we'll pray God's blessings as he, as he joins them and helps lead them in worship. At this time, let's rise, greet those around us as we start with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As part of our confession and absolution, we've begun to add the Ten Commandments back in, so we'll recite the commandments together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment in silence reflecting on our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we will say the words of the psalm reading uh, responsibly. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord, full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. Amen. Please be seated. All right, we're on the next week, second week of our memory verse uh, as we've joined the school, so we'll say the words of Ephesians 4.32 together. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. We'll continue at the next hymn. Of some computer issues so at this time uh, let's rise and we're gonna we're gonna say the Creed together uh, I know you all if you go to the back inside back cover of the hymnal we will say the words of the Apostles Creed together <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, while we wait for those to continue, let me try this out with you so you know some of these responses. The Lord be with you. And also with you. All right, and let's pray. I will pray the prayer this morning. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness. Give thanks for your compassion 
and praise your holy name through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Katie is here with some announcements for us this morning. Good morning. Um, sorry about that. Um, an alarm is going off on a device upstairs, so we're bypassing that alarm and resetting the whole system. So it'll be up again in a minute. Um, as far as things coming up for the rest of the month, you see a lot of stuff here on your announcement sheet. Um, Undy, Undy Sunday collection did begin today and will run through October 23rd. So there are boxes available for those um, new in the package underwear and socks uh, that we'll be donating to Orphan Green Train through the Dorcas Circle. Um, Dorcas Circle is also meeting this Tuesday at 6 here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, this month they'll be assembling um, their personal care kits for Lutheran World Relief. So if you um, would like to help them set up for that, they'll be setting up at 5 and then their meeting time at 6 is when they'll actually be assembling the, the care kits for that. Um, we do need to know if you are a member of Emmanuel and you would like to either add or modify or renew your subscription to Lutheran Witness. We need to know that in the office by this Thursday. So if, um, if that pertains to you, um, please call and, and uh, ask to talk to Candice and she will uh, make those changes for you or add you to our list. Reformation is coming up on October 31st, 30th. Excuse me. Um, again, we will just have one service that Sunday at 9.30. We will have communion, that's a little bit off schedule, um, but we will serve communion at Reformation uh, Sunday celebration. Um, and we'll also have our seniors and shut-ins with us that morning. So if you have a senior or a shut-in who would like to be present for that service and need some help with transportation, please let us know that so that we can get them on the list of people that we're coordinating for. And then on Monday the 31st, actually Reformation Day, um, we will have our trunk or treat community event out here in the parking lot. We have already, I think, eight trunks that signed up in this first week of registration, but we could certainly use several more to help fill that parking lot. Popcorn, cotton candy, um, inflatables, all the, the fun stuff to make that a safe, uh, also fun night for the families in our community. And then one save the date for you here uh, towards the bottom. On Wednesday, December 21st, we are going to be hosting a new event for Emmanuel uh, that's being coordinated by Glenda Paskett, a uh, follow the star mini stroll with a live nativity. Um, so it'll be, it's a two hour event at the same time that we normally do our midweek Advent services, a little bit longer. Um, and it'll be out here in front of church uh, with the opportunity to kind of see the story from Adam and Eve to the birth of Jesus um, with some music, and some snacks and, and all of that out here on the front. So that's December 21st, so just make a note of that on your calendar. And if you'd like more information or you're interested in how you might be able to help with that event, Glenda Paskett is your contact for that and her phone number is in here as well. All right, thanks Katie for the announcements there. We'll continue with our offerings as we give back to God a portion of what he has blessed each of us with, uh, as well as our next hymn.
Please rise as we go to God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you bestow on us each and every day, and we ask, Lord, that you accept these offerings as we return to you but a small portion of what you give to uh, provide for us each and every day. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen our faith and trust in you as you call us to give back. Lord, we pray that you would use these offerings furthering the mission of this congregation as we care for this congregation and especially as we go into the community sharing your word. To that, Lord, we pray for the various community events that we host here. We, we pray for Follow the Star, for Trunk or Treat, for the, the shut-in communion service, our Reformation celebration, and, and all of the things that we do, especially also the, the Unday Sunday collection as uh, we provide uh, for the basic necessities for, for many children across the country and around the world. We pray, Lord, that you bless these efforts, that they may know the love, that all may know the love of Christ uh, as we care for one another and our needs and, and as we share your good news. Lord, we pray for those in our midst that uh, are in need of your care. We pray for healing and, and continued uh, recovery or strength, you, you knowing the needs of each. Uh, we pray for Robert Grimm, Angie Peterson, Violet Ingram, uh, and Peggy Berry, and anybody else, Lord, that we name silently before you now. Lord, as you know their needs, we pray that you bring comfort and healing to them and that you continue to watch over them. Lord, for those families that grieve the loss of loved ones, we pray that you be with them also. Point them always to our Lord and Savior Jesus and the promise of the, of the resurrection. We pray especially today for the family of Herbert Richter as you have called him home, and we pray, Lord, that you continue to comfort and bless that family. Lord, for those celebrating, we give thanks today with Vicki Peach as she celebrates her birthday. For other ministries, we pray for St. Peter Lutheran Preschool in Gun Barrel City, for Redeemer Lutheran in Benbrook, Texas, and Trinity Lutheran in Hope, North Dakota. Lord, you know the needs of those congregations and the ministries they have. We pray that you would continue to strengthen them, strengthen them as they bring your light into those communities. We continue to lift up to you those uh, in Florida and, and other areas of the world where Hurricane Ian has caused much destruction. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue to send resources that way that other may, others may recover quickly and return to normalness in their lives. This month, we give a special thanks to you, Lord, for, for all the called and commissioned church workers uh, as, we, as we have that this month, the appreciation for them. And Lord, we pray that you strengthen each of them in their ministries as they serve you and this congregation. Lord, we pray for these things and all those things in our hearts and minds. Uh, in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus, who has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, one other final petition today. We do lift up to you our need for rain. Lord, we pray that you would send it in its time and continue to give us peace and patience while we wait uh, for your time and trusting that you have us uh, in mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from <coughs> Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah and the other Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Malon and Kilian died, so that the, woman was le the women were left without with her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from that place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, 
return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter for me, to me, for your sake, that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her, kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where I go, for where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's epistle is from 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please rise as you're able for this morning's gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. like to come join me for a children's message you can come on up good morning I brought this down with me this morning. Anybody know what this is? A backpack, right? Um, And pretty much if you see me, you see me with my backpack, right? Yeah, those of you that get to see me like multiple days during the week, you know, I always have my backpack with me, right? Here's why. Um, A lot of people carry, like a lot of women carry a purse, right? I have way too much stuff. 
to carry just in a purse. And I need to have my arms free, right? Because what if I have to give someone a high five or a hug, right? So I put all my stuff in my backpack because this is where all my important things are that I need to have with me all the time, okay? So we're gonna look at some of the important things that I have in here. We're gonna try to figure out what, what are they worth? Why do I need to have these things with me? So first, I have a coffee pod. Okay, not just any coffee pod though. This is the, the Houston blend. Okay, it has a little bit of a coconut flavor. All right, so this is really important. How, how much would you give me for this? What is this coffee pod worth to you? Nothing. <laughs> no deal, no deal, Sydney. How about, um, let's see, let's see. How about my keys to every door on campus? How much is this worth to you? A lot. A lot? How much would you give me for it? The whole campus. You would give me the whole campus? Mmm. Mmm. I'd take a dollar. Okay, all right. Um, what else do I have? Let's see. Oh, box of crayons. How much is this worth? To you guys, how much would you give me for this whole box of crayons? Let me tell you, only only three of the crayons have been used. So it's like a basically a brand new box of crayons. How much would you give me for this? Not none? Nothing? That's not valuable enough for you guys? All right. Well, then let's go into the big pouch where the good stuff is. Let's see. Big Bible. What do you think? How much? $20? I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Um, let's see. Do you guys know Mary Poppins? I don't even know what's in the bottom of this bag anymore. Oh, a whole bag of cough drops. <laughs> Yuck. So Harper's not making a deal with me for these cough drops. Anyone down here trade me something for the cough? No? Okay. All right, last one. Last one. How about my computer? $10? 300 a lot? What if I tell you that this computer also comes with my job? You can have my job too. Yeah? 300 still? Yeah. Deal. Deal. Here you go. Um, so the things in here are, they're worth a lot to me, right? It's my crayons, right? It's my keys. I need those keys. This coffee pod, which you guys said you would give me nothing for, which is probably good because you guys don't really need to drink coffee yet. This, this is going to be really important to me this morning, right? Because I'm going to make another cup of coffee before I go teach confirmation class. So this is important to me. These things are worth something to me. Okay, they have a value. Can you guys think of anything that you have that's worth something to you? What's something you have that's really important to you? Yeah, no one? A computer, okay, yep. A dog, new dog, nice. Yep, those are pretty important to us, right? Have a lot of value, a lot of worth. What would it take for you to trade something that's really important to you for something else? A cat. a cat? Your cat's really important to you or you would trade something important for a cat? Or both? I'll trade you a cat for a cat. Yeah, maybe. It might depend on the cat, right? Some cats are mean, some cats are nice. We'll have to check. Um, in our readings today, we heard three different readings where someone decided 
that what God had to offer was worth more than something that was important to them. So we started with Ruth. Okay, Ruth um, was a, a woman in the Bible who got married to a guy who then died. And Ruth had the opportunity to stay where she was from, to stay like in her hometown. And she said no. She said, I'm going with to where you're going. Because what I, ha what I see, what I know, is that your God is worth something. And it is worth me giving up my life, giving up where I live, the people I know, to come be a part of that. And then in uh, 2 Timothy, Paul's writing, and he says, he, he talks about the suffering, okay, the things that have been hard, the hurts that he's received for following God, for teaching people about God. And he says it's all worth it. It's all worth it because of what God has done for him. And then in our gospel reading, there were the, the 10 men who were sick, and Jesus cleansed all of them, and one of them took the time to go back and see Jesus. Do you think he just went back to see Jesus to say thank you? No, he went back to see Jesus because something amazing happened, and this guy realized this guy, this guy is worth something. He's worth the time. He's worth me going and getting to know him. And so we have a lot of things that have value to us. God said 2,000 years ago, actually even more than that, he said that these people, these people who are sitting in this church today are worth something to me. They're worth the life of my son Jesus. And he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. And he gave us something that's worth everything that we have, that has such an amazing value. And so we get to be like Ruth, we get to be like Paul, we get to be like that, that um, healed man who says, I know that God values me and I wanna know what that's all about. And so we get to put worth, we're asked to put worth in what God has done for us. And so for, for us, it's more important than a computer, than a box of crayons, than a cup of coffee, than anything I have in this backpack, is, is knowing that I'm worth something to God and that he's worth something to me. All right? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for showing me how much I'm worth by sending Jesus to die for my sins. Help me to grow in my love for you because you are worth something to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You guys can head back to your seats.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I have a confession to make this morning. Uh, some of you are already aware of this, uh, what I'm going to admit to. Uh, I am not great at writing thank you notes. As I say this today, I have no doubt some of you, uh, there have been a time or two when perhaps you've given a gift or otherwise, and I should have written a thank you note to one of you, and I did not do it. I do, I do regret that. And as much as I'm being, I'm trying to joke a little bit about it, I regret that. I don't, uh, I think it's important, and I, I've always admired others that do that very well. If any family's listening today, especially my siblings or my mom in particular, they know this is true. Year after year growing up, mom would harass and harangue me after birthdays and Christmas. All right, maybe it's not a nice way to say it. She would tell me and my siblings over and over, write your thank you notes. Sorry to the aunts and uncles uh, today that I suppose I should apologize to. Mom threatened on many occasions, they're going to stop sending gifts if you don't start writing thank you notes. I was full of gratitude each year. I was always thankful. And if and, if, and, and, if, if, and when I've been around you or otherwise received something, I'm always profuse with the thanks spoken. Uh, but not, just admittedly, not great at writing the notes. And that's something I, of course, would love to I do work on getting better at. I say that today, that's what came to mind as I thought of today's or read today's gospel reading. Nine lepers who were not good at their thank yous either. You heard the story read. Jesus heals these ten lepers and only one, a foreigner, a Samaritan, somebody hated by that Jewish community, stops to return to give thanks to Jesus. It's a strange thing that he does and that the others do not, as we read the story. To understand first, we need to, I guess, get a little bit of background, and I've already suggested some of it, to first to know that uh, the setting of everything here first. We need to understand that these folks know who Jesus is, and they know what he's capable of doing. Luke 17, verse 11, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, we're gonna to get to that in a second, and as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers, who stood at a distance, lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They knew who Jesus was. They had heard the stories. They're, they're crying out to him because they know what he can do. They know that Jesus can help them. They know he's capable of taking away this awful disease. that they, or at least one of them, even as a Samaritan, would reach out to Jesus is surprising. Again, these the Samaritans and Jews do not like each other. There's a long history of, of conflict. There's a long history of betrayal of, of religious differences and beliefs, which led to much fighting. For anybody listening to the story today, as Jesus tells us, or as they see this, the fact that it's a Samaritan increases the tension and the conflict. The hearers know something's off, that it's just this one who returns, who gives thanks to Jesus for what he has done. What else? Uh, these guys have leprosy. Uh, it's an awful disease, right? We read about this in biblical times. It's a disease that affects the flesh. The flesh dies and falls off. It, it's disfiguring. Um, it meant religious persecution or religious separation. You're unclean because of the dead flesh. Nobody wanted to, to touch this person because they didn't want it to spread. And so these people were uh, put out of the community, right? You hear in the story today, they're outside of the town as Jesus approaches. They approach him, okay? Uh, and and uh, so they're out there, and, and, and as Jesus comes in, they reach out to him. They ask for healing from this devastating disease, which isn't just this physical part, but the social aspect as well. And notice Jesus does not shy away from them. We've seen Jesus do this over and over. People in need, people need healing, uh, whatever the condition is, and Jesus right into it. Now, we don't get any details other than to say, because others, right, we see Jesus make mud out of his spit or put his hands on their eyes or do all sorts of things. He just tells them, go to the priests. 
go to the priests and let them see that you've been made well, right? And it's because, again, because of this uncleanliness condition, not just the physical part, but a spiritual uncleanness that they had. They're standing in society, and the priests had control of that. Jesus is here to fix things, and he just says to them as they cry out, Master, have mercy. He has mercy. He says, go show the priests. Jesus fixes them. When he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, it says, they were cleansed. That's it. Jesus, help us. Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they go, it's done. They're sick. They see Jesus. They cry out. End of story. And as they head back, right? And notice, I think that's important. It doesn't, they don't ask any questions, say, when is it going to happen? They just turn around and go. They believe what Jesus says. They say, just go show it to the priests. And so they go. They believe that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And as they go, it says they are cleansed. It's an important point. They asked, they received. Period. There wasn't anything that they had to do. No listen to instructions other than to just go show that they were healed. Listen again to verse, starting with verse 15. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus, giving thanks to him. He was a, now he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. He had 10 people with leprosy, 10 with this devastating disease, 10 who cried out to Jesus for help, 10 who were healed, 10 cleansed by him, and one who returns to give thanks. And Jesus says, with rise, go, your faith has made you well. Now, Now, we often stop there and we think, okay, look, Jesus said it was your faith rising. So he, he returns, and so then Jesus heals them. And no, make sure you catch the order here. They cried out to Jesus for help. He heals them, and then they return to give thanks. His faith was in the listening to what Jesus said. Jesus said, go, and he went. And I want you to see that that's part of the message today. Jesus brings healing and salvation and forgiveness into your life, period. We cry out, just like we do during confession and absolution, or maybe other times when you're struggling, we cry out, Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinful person. And he has. Period. He has forgiven you. You hear that announcement each and every week as you gather here. I hope you hear it and see it as you read your Bible, as you sing hymns, as you cling to the promises God has made to you that he has made you well. And your faith believes that promises, believes in that forgiveness, that he has died on the cross, that he has forgiven you your sins, that he has risen from the dead and gives us life everlasting, period. That's your gift. That's what he has done, and he he has saved you from that. And you turn and you give thanks. That is to say that you return to him, and, and you'll say here that, We return because of the gifts that he freely offers in word and sacrament. It's part of why we come here every Sunday. A, that we get to hear it as he pours out his blessings and gifts, but that you you have opportunity to give thanks. The story today does remind me, however, that we are not great at the thank yous. Where is everyone? We're not ten cleansed? Today we might, not, we might ask, instead of more ten cleansed, wasn't every single member of Emmanuel cleansed, forgiven? Wasn't each person in Giddings or Lee County cleansed? Where is everyone? Today I am glad you're here. The one out of ten perhaps to return to give thanks to Jesus for the forgiveness that has been poured out on you every single day. For the forgiveness given and won by Jesus' death and resurrection. But I might press each of you some. How's your frequency 
in returning. If each and every day we receive their forgiveness, how often do we return to give thanks to God? It's not about being good enough that you're a good person because you come back to church or because you come and worship. That's not what I mean at all. It's to return and give thanks to God for the blessing that you have been given, the mercy and grace poured out on you. To gather, whether you sit, stand, kneel, whatever it is, and give thanks to God for Jesus dying and rising to give you new life, to cleanse you wholly and completely, drawing you near to him, outcast from heaven or him no more. Now, man, there's not alone in this problem. Every single church has this issue, Lutheran or otherwise, in our, in our county, in our country, I suspect, and around the world. Why? Why do we fail to return and give thanks? For many of us, and I think it's in our culture in particular, it is our prosperity. We're one of the wealthiest, most powerful, advanced cultures in the history of the world. Why do we need God? We're doing okay. We don't struggle that much. We do notice that because when there's times when we do have struggles, when we're sick, ill, or we're worried about things, all of a sudden we return and come back to him, which is okay. He wants us to return in those moments. But why aren't we returning if every single moment? Why do we fail to stop and turn and give thanks except when things are tough? It is important to come and to recognize the blessings that Jesus gives us each and every day to return and give thanks for the blessings that he has poured out on us. Part of the reason we fail to return is because we don't recognize the depth of what he has done for us. In our sin, we are separated from him. In our sin, we are condemned to eternal separation and death. But God, by his grace and mercy, because, and I love the way Katie said that, is he values you individually. Has given everything that you may have life. To know that you were forgiven and loved by him no matter the circumstances. And that no matter what befalls us in this life, that he has given us everything. May we each be filled with gratitude for all of God's blessings, knowing the forgiveness and returning to him day after day. In Jesus' name, amen. And may the peace of God then, which surpasses all understanding, may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.